Tailwind CSS is designed to be run as part of your build step, but we've always made a CDN version available for quick demos or prototyping directly in the browser. Now, while this is great, it always had a number of drawbacks. To keep the CDN file size reasonable, we've always had to exclude most of Tailwind's variants like Active, Group Focus or Dark Mode. You also couldn't customize Tailwind with your own colors, breakpoints or font families. And of course, none of the new just-in-time mode features were available. For Tailwind CSS 3.0, we've totally revamped the CDN story. Instead of shipping a limited, pre-compiled version of Tailwind, we've created a new just-in-time CDN that compiles right in the browser with JavaScript. With the new just-in-time CDN, you now have the full power of Tailwind CSS available to you. And in this video, we take an early sneak peek at that. Alright, so here we have a very simple HTML file, and what I'm going to do is add the just-in-time CDN link in the script tag in the document head. So after the title here, I will paste the CDN link. Let's keep in mind that this is a sneak peek video. At the time of recording this, Tailwind CSS 3.0 is not out yet. And so this is sort of a placeholder URL for the CDN link. And by the time Tailwind CSS 3.0 comes out, this will definitely change. And when I save this, you can see that the styles have changed. Uh, Tailwind's pre-flight is resetting the heading sizes, the typography. So it tells me that Tailwind CSS is now working. So let me start by adding a little bit of padding on the body tag, so P-4, so it looks a little bit nicer. And now as you can see, we can apply any existing Tailwind CSS class. So on the H1 tag, I'll add text blue 500, text 4XL, and font bold. Another great feature that's available in just-in-time mode is arbitrary values, which is useful when you need to break out of your design system. So let me show you an example of that. Instead of text blue 500, we will open square brackets and I'll pass a custom hex value here of 5E1EC7. And yep, it's working. Now keep in mind that when using arbitrary values like this, you typically break away from the predefined scales. So make sure you understand the trade-offs and when is the right time to use this for your project. Okay, so that's useful for a one-off use, but what if we wanted to use that color here somewhere else in the project? In a normal Tailwind CSS project, you would add this color to your config file, and well, you can do exactly the same with the CDN. So let's go just under the CDN script tag, and we'll open another script tag, and here we'll write tailwind.config, and we'll define an object that will redefine the default config. Here we will go in theme, and then extend the colors object, and let's create a new color that we will call lavender, which will be our 5E1EC7 hex color. And so this will create utilities like BG lavender or text lavender. So here, instead of text uh, with the arbitrary value, I'll replace this with text lavender. And it still works just fine. All right, next we'll style these two paragraphs of text. You can see we have a div that wraps both paragraphs. So I'll add a class of py-6 just to add some vertical spacing. And you know what would be nice to use here? The typography plugin. And turns out that you can do that very easily. When using the CDN link, you can pass a query parameter called plugins. And this will allow you to specify any Tailwind CSS first party plugin available. So here we want the typography plugin. And if you wanted more than one plugin, you can have comma separated values like we could have forms. But here we just want typography. And if for some reason you need to specify a version of this plugin, you can do it like so. All right, so let's save this. And if we go back down to the div with the two paragraphs, here I can add the pros class from the typography plugin. And you can see the typography plugin in action that changed the color, the line height, spacing, and link styling. Great, so now let's style the last thing down here, the try it out button. So let's move down and here on the anchor tag, I will add a class attribute. The background color will be BG dash and we'll use our custom lavender color and the text will be white. And let's add some padding, PX5 and PY2. And let's also add inline block so it respects the vertical spacing and padding. Let's change the font weight with font medium and we'll add some rounded corners and a box shadow. Okay, our button is looking pretty good. In the previous version of the CDN, most of Tailwind's variants had to be disabled and you basically only had access to hover or focus and even there, they were conservatively only enabled to certain plugins. With the new just-in-time CDN, you have access to absolutely all of Tailwind's variants. So if I change the color of the button on a hover with BG Blue 500, something like this has always been working. 
But in the previous version of the CDN, if I tried something like active BG red 500, this would not have worked because the active variant is not enabled by default. But here, if I click on the button, you can see that it works out of the box. And you not only have access to all the variants, but you can also stack variants together if you need. So you could do something crazy like MD, dark, disabled, focus, hover, BG, blue, 500, and that would work as well. That is if that made sense for your app. But as you can see, really powerful stuff. All right, I'll remove this last class. And let's say we wanted to abstract away all these utility classes in a reusable class component. To do that, we'll need to write some custom CSS. And so still in our HTML file, let's open a style tag. But here for the type attribute, instead of having text slash CSS, we will have text slash tailwind CSS. And so this just tells the Tailwind CDN that it needs to pass these styles, which allows us to use special uh, functions and directive of Tailwind CSS like at apply. So here, let's create a class called BTN. And here I'll use at apply. And I will paste all the utilities that we had applied on this try it out button, like so. And so let's go down in our anchor tag. And instead of all these classes, I will just use the new BTN component class. And as you can see, our button still works, uh, including the hover and active variants. All right, so as you can see, the new just-in-time CDN is really cool. And you might just think, well, I'll use this to ship to production. But slow down, the just-in-time CDN is not really intended to be used that way. It has a fairly large file size at about 100 kilobytes, which is definitely more than what you would get if you compile the static Tailwind CSS file. Also, because the styles are generated at runtime, you might experience this flash of unstyled content, which is definitely something you want to try to avoid. You should really consider the just-in-time CDN as a development tool, and then compile a static CSS file for whatever you ship to production. And once again, keep in mind that at the time of recording this video, we're looking at an alpha release of Tailwind CSS3. The CDN link will change and we'll probably find a few little issues between now and the official stable 3.0 release. All right, that about wraps it up for this video. As always, thank you so much for watching and I will see you in the next one. Bye for now.